Genshin Impact, or as it's also known in more refined circles, Genshin Impact. The most immersive waifu collector slash gambling ring disguised as an RPG released in, uh, one sec. September of 2020. Now, I've been an avid Genshin player ever since launch. Okay, maybe not launch launch. It took me a while to get onto the bandwagon, but still. I mean, I was in there, climbing mountains, battling the abyss, and uh, contemplating nice. Osmanthus wine back when d -Luke was still the best DPS around. But now, Genshin's come a long way. Almost three years and 24 version updates later, we have three new nations, a whole new element, sailboat, Spider-Man, Yu-Gi-Oh, The Sims, fishing. This is, uh, this is fun, right? Yet still no co-op abyss. Since release, there's been no shortage of new characters in the game, each of them with their own unique sets of skills and bursts. Duh, except when they don't. I mean, look at this, practically the same character. But other than that, you've got characters that can sprint, roll, teleport, jump. Characters that can create a lift for some reason. But there's one character that immediately caught my eye, even way back before he was even released. Yeah, you read the title, you know who I'm talking about. It's Baiju- Eh, uh, just kidding, no one cares about you, mate. It's Scaramouche, Kunikuzushi, Kabukimono, whatever you want to call the bastard. The washed up, abandoned, emo, delinquent love child of the Raiden Shogun. First time I bumped into him was in the Unreconciled Stars event and I thought... Are you deaf or just stupid? When did I give you the right to issue your own orders? Man, what an absolute asshole. I need to have him. I still remember the talks about him in the community. Is he going to be playable? Is he just going to be an NPC? Are they going to pull a senora on him? <laughs> Filthy rats! Oh, uh, spoilers, I guess. But two years and, quite frankly, an embarrassing amount of fake leaks later, Hoyoverse dropped something that sent fangirls and boys across the globe fainting and dropping to their knees. Now, check this out. At last, he was playable, and also blue for some reason. So it turns out, Scaramouche said, Screw you, Mum, I don't want your rank ass Electrovision, and then swapped it for a snazzy new Animo Vision. The best element, don't at me. I was already such a huge fan of his character before his release, but when he turned out to be my favourite element as well, it was a no brainer to pull for him. I mean, he was the only character that has the ability to fly. Eh, for a few seconds. He quickly became one of my most played characters. I got a signature weapon, triple crowned him, and even pulled for a constellation. Something I never do for 5 stars because, you know. This is the team I usually run with him. Raiden for that Electro application and the mommy issues. Zhong Li for those fat, fat shields because he's a weak, weak baby boy. And when Yelan gets her burst up, it's looking like an Alan Walker concert with a side of genocide. But I got to thinking, just exactly how powerful is he alone? You know, with all that lone wanderish that he's got going on, how good would he actually fare in solo combat? So, what I've decided to do is I'm going to fight every weekly boss with just Scaramouche. No other party members, no co-op, and no food buffs aside from healing. Now, I know this has been done before, but it sounded like a fun challenge, so I wanted to try it out. Okay, so the plan is eight weekly bosses, one character, and zero productive use of my time. Which brings us to... Ah, Devalin, baby's first weekly boss. Everyone beat this thing first try, guaranteed. Let's not mess about here. Okay, but to be fair, he isn't much of a boss fight to begin with. It's basically just hit him in the claws and then left click on the big spike on his neck until you win. Onto the big inconspicuous glowing spike. Totally not a boss weakness. Just go ham. Come on. There we go. Look at that damage. Oh, big boy. Big boy damage. Maybe he's just weak. I don't know. And there we go. That's my boy, Scaramouche. Let's go. Now, this boss on is going to be easy. I hate this 
bastard with a burning, smouldering passion. Now you might be thinking, well hold on a minute, isn't Andreas pretty easy as a boss fight? Sure, halfway through he turns into Sonic the Hedgehog and runs around the arena for like three years, but the fight itself is pretty easy, no? But let me stop you right there. Yes, the fight is easy, if you're not Scaramouche. You see, Andreas is immune to Animo. Let me say that again, immune to Animo. Take a wild guess what the one type of elemental damage Scaramouche can deal is. So how are you planning to beat him, Ray? I hear you asking. Oh, well I'm absolutely devastated you asked because if you hadn't, I wouldn't have had to fight this godforsaken four-legged abomination. Well, there's a little weapon called the Eye of Perception, and if you read its ability, it says that basically every eight seconds, every time an attack hits, there's a chance to fire a special physical damage projectile at the enemy, which means the fight is technically possible, unfortunately. Okay, so before you even get to the fight, you have to run a freaking triathlon just to get to him. I mean, look at this. I swear getting to Celestia would be less tedious. And once you get there, the fight isn't exactly a walk in the park either. All right, let's see how much damage this thing does. Oh, this is going to be a long night. The first phase was mostly okay. Just some sweeping and slashing attacks that for the life of me, I cannot dodge with iframes. Like, is it just me, or does this thing not obey the laws of video game design? Nice, dodge him. Alright, just gotta dodge this. This dodge- Oh, come on! I- Oh, that's literally frame perfect! Oh, he got me there. Alright, he got me. I'll- I'll take- I'll take the L. Wait. Wait, hold up. Wait, where am I? Oh, no, I'm on the other side of the cliff. Oh, come on! No, I have to go all the way back. So after failing way, way, way too many times, I realised that the weapon with my build was just not doing enough damage. So I played around with my artefacts and tried to go for maximum attack, since, you know, this damage scales off attack. Right, I'm back you pompous Pomeranian, and I've got the power of good artefact on my side this time. What? 5k? I was hitting like 7k before. I'm literally doing less damage somehow. Wait, there's no way I just lost 2k attack for no reason. I literally have more attack than before, but... Wait... That thing just crit! So then I basically went back to my old artifacts, but this time with a physical damage goblet in place of my animo one. And now we're in business. That being said, the damage wasn't exactly Reddit showcase worthy either. Once I got through its first phase, I finally entered phase 2, and little did I know, this was going to be the single most soul-draining experience of this whole playthrough. For starters, he throws out these bullshit ice missiles that rain down from the heavens and they don't exactly tickle. Then, he has two types of attacks, an anima one and a cryo one. The anima one is hard hitting but pretty okay to dodge, but the cryo one is an absolute nightmare. It comes out super fast out of nowhere, and if it so much as grazes the shadow of your foot, it hits you. Oh, and should I mention, if any of its cryo attacks hit you, it slows you down by about 3000%. I mean look at this, absolute snail's pace. And once you're this slow, and you're a squishy soy boy with no shield, you're basically dead. Oh, and I forgot to mention, if you die, you start over from the nearest waypoint. So you know what that means. It gets significantly harder towards the end where he summons these annoying little sh walls and of course they deal cryo damage, why the f not? But after countless failures and multiple mental breakdowns, I finally nailed him. Had to pull out the last minute elemental burst there to get some iframes. Oh my god, fucking finally! Oh my god, that took way longer than it should have. Oh god, I was just about to kill myself. So. After losing a significant chunk of my sanity, we can finally, finally move on to the next boss. Ah, uh, child. The boss that when he first came out, clapped everyone so hard that Hoyoverse had to nerf the crap out of him. I'm gonna be honest, child was a little disappointing. Maybe it was because I just finished fighting that absolute wanker of a boss, but I expected him to put up more of a fight. I mean, who wins? A fearsome, battle-hardened Fatui Harbinger wielding a vision and a fully unleashed delusion, 
awesome ice doggo. Do all right, child. Let's see what you've got. Harbinger versus Harbinger here. All right, let's see. The skill. Oh, oh shoot! I'm I'm just deleting him. Look at this. I'm phase two already. Come on, child. You're giving the Harbingers a bad name here. And yep, nope. You're still weak. You're, you're still puny, baby boy. Let's go. All right, all right. Show me your, your last phase. But surely this is going to be more of a challenge. Surely, please. All right, big man. We've got freaking Ichigo over here with his Bankai activated. And uh, you, you still can't take a hit. Yep, you're still weak as hell. Man, Hoyoverse had to nerf this. Are you joking? Man, let's just just get out of here. I think let me just finish you off real quick. Just get out of here. You're not even worth my time. Get out of you. Embarrassing the harbingers. Shame on you, child. Man, that was underwhelming. Oh well, I guess they don't call him child for nothing. <laughs> so, there you have it! Uh, quite underwhelming. I don't know if he's just that weak, or if my Scaramouche is just that strong. <laughs> Probably the latter. Anyways, next up on the list is... Now, Age de Heart was a bit tricky. His gimmick is that each week, he cycles through different combinations of four elements. Cryo, Hydro, Pyro, or Electro. This week it was... Pyro and Electro. I'm overloaded with joy. <laughs> his other gimmick is that if you get hit by any of his elemental attacks, and you're not protected by a shield, eh, you're dead. No, no, no. Oh, oh come on. I got hit once. Not like this. Not like this. So the fight starts off pretty easy, just some slam and ham, nothing too special. But after taking out about a third of his health, he'll go big baby mode and throw temper tantrum, stomping the shit out of the ground. After that, he'll absorb his first element, which in this case was Pyro. Okay, Pyro the patches, don't get hit. Oh, God damn it! Oh, you really can't get hit with these, huh? Okay, second attempt. Wind slap him a few times, he brings out the Wambulance, dodge the Pyro Patchers, and here we have his second elemental absorption. Electrifying. <laughs> he starts off by burying himself and throwing out this lightning strike attack. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 that was rigged. That was rigged. I couldn't go anywhere. I, I literally couldn't go anywhere. I just, oh, come on. Oh, this is so unfair. Alright, I've got a pretty good idea of how this works now. Just, uh, don't get hit. So after essentially no hitting the second and third phases, I was finally able to take this overgrown bullfrog down. And that's one more in the bag. Now before we move on to the next boss, I want to take a moment to thank the sponsor for this video... No one. Moving on. Now we come to the hottest weekly boss of all, in more ways than one. So, Signora's gimmick is that in her first phase, she utilizes a cold meter. You know, that mechanic they introduced in Dragon Spine that nobody liked? First phase was easy enough, she's got some annoying cryo attacks, but luckily they don't make you slower than a Genshin player running on a treadmill. Unlike some bosses I can mention. Halfway through the fight, she'll wrap herself in a big old cocoon where you have to pick up these cool little moth guys to do damage to her. She has this one missile attack in this phase which I swear is impossible to dodge. Okay, okay, we get it, we get it, we get it! Oh my- oh, just f***ing dodge! Now here's where the real fun begins. Signora unveils herself to be none other than the Crimson Witch of Flames! What? Whoa, who would have guessed? Nah, everybody, literally everybody knew. Her attacks get way hotter and way flashier, but most of them use this long whip thingy, which is, uh, is kinda kinky. Oh, what's that? Cold meter? Get the shit out of here, now it's a hot meter. Also, most of her attacks leave this sort of patch of scorched earth on the ground that turns this fight into the worst game of the floor is lava ever. But you can get rid of them by hitting these uh, ice crystal thingies. If you can f hit them! No, hit the, no, the crystal! Hit the crystal! Oh my god, no, the crystal! What are you shooting at? Oh my god, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. No, please! Oh, I beg you! <laughs> Oh my god. Anyways, aside from that, the rest of the fight was relatively easy and everything went smoothly. Almost as smooth as Signora's ass.
Okay, technically she's Scaramouche's sister, but this is anime, so it's basically the same thing. This was probably my favorite boss fight out of the bunch, and not just because she's the second most breedable boss on this list. Reason being, it was just hard enough to be a fun challenge, while not being unnecessarily tedious and making me want to pull my own hair out. Cough, Andreas, cough. Mother-son reunion. Years of bitterness, rage and anguish has led up to this one moment of motion. Like I said, this fight was surprisingly enjoyable. Although her attacks do look suspiciously similar to a certain half-demon hybrid, but who cares, they look awesome. When she transitions to her second phase, I totally forgot about this attack, which kills you instantly, no questions asked. And the only way to avoid it is to hit this orb thing with an electro attack. Now as you might have noticed, Scaramouche is kind of done with the whole electro thing, so uh, this was a major concern. Luckily though, it turns out any elemental attack can charge it, not just electro. Okay, we got it, nice. Save. Ha, eat that mom. There was also this attack which you can totally cheese with Scaramouche since you can just... Uh, whoop. Oh, I see no god up here. Except me. Anyways, a few attempts and a copious amount of seizure-inducing lightning attacks later, I finally exacted Scaramouche's sweet, long overdue revenge. Mama just killed an Archon, although technically she's not an Archon, she's the sister of the clone of the original Archon, although I don't know how that works, but anyways I beat her. Oh, this is kind of awkward, we're wearing the same physical form, oh how embarrassing. Right, so the seventh boss is none other than Scaramouche himself. Though, in the story, it's technically a manifestation of his past self, or something? Yeah, I don't know, this whole deleting yourself from existence isn't something I'm awfully familiar with. While Raiden was my favourite boss fight, this fight was the one I had the most fun doing. Oh, look at you guys, pulling out quality boss fights side by side like this. Such good siblings. So his first phase starts off with him in this sort of mecha Susanoo looking thing. This fight has a really interesting mechanic where you have this goofy Dumbo looking thing which floats around you and you can trigger special effects in the arena. There are these elemental tiles on the floor which you can activate when Dumbo here has enough energy. The Hydro tile heals you, the Animal tile creates an upcurrent you can use to dodge attacks, the Pyro tile counters the boss's cryo attack and vice versa, the Electro tile, the most useful one, disables him for a short time. Which is kind of ironic since, you know, getting the Electronosis was kind of his whole point here. And Geo? Can go fuck off I guess, I don't know why they didn't add Geo. Sorry to the three people who still main Geo, let's be honest, your element has been irrelevant since 2.3. So after you finish playing Dance Dance Revolution, you get to his second phase where he whips out a goddamn Ava unit. He's out here looking like he's ready to have a stroke at the hospital. Just gonna let that one sit for a bit. So after he digs out his mech's legs, the fight gets a bit more interesting. Dumbo goes Rambo mode and turns into a full-on Gatling gun, and Scrimbus is out here piloting an armoured core! Throughout the fight, you collect more energy particles, and once you have enough, you launch a magic green sure you can right at the boss's nutsack. Merry Christmas, Shinji! He's got some real nifty attacks for this phase, like this one where he opens up lots of circular portals that shoot projectiles. Never seen that one before. He also has one instant kill move like his sister, where he summons a giant spirit bomb and to stop it you have to destroy these four thingies in the middle, which, side note, I find it amusing that he just stands there and continues charging while you try and sabotage his attack. Anyways, once you fully deplete his shield, he gets staggered, allowing you to land a direct hit. So you Spider-Man right up to his head and go in for the kill, which, okay, pro tip, if you're designing a nigh omnipotent war machine to ascend into Godhood, Maybe don't include conveniently placed platforms near your face from where enemies can attack you when you're staggered. So after that, you just finish him off with a few more hits to the hippocampus and you're golden. This just shows that you can't trust anyone. Not even yourself. Now this finally brings us to... So, our last stop on this boss run is basically an overgrown Caesar salad with a leafy fetus in it. Whoa, this is uh, ugh, kind of a dilemma we found ourselves in. I mean, uh, it's getting kind of uncomfortable here. What, what are the uh, moral consequences of this? 
Anyways, for the first phase, this guy is pretty straightforward. He's got some sweeping attacks, some slamming attacks, and this one attack that he can totally cheese with Scaramouche. I mean, look at this. Like a tasteful joke over a Twitter user's head. I see no god up here except me. So once you get through this phase, you get to this sort of half phase? He drops this blob of mucus down, and then you have to slaughter these younglings to prevent them from munching on your ball. Take back your little buggers, I will not hesitate to puck children. Once that's all done, the Guardian fully blossoms into its final form and the real fight begins. Ah, my old nemesis. Leafy vegetables. And also fetuses. What? Hmm, now that I've taken a good look at it, kind of looks like a I'm vegan storm terror if I'm being honest. In this form, he retains most of his attacks, but now they're extra green. There is this one really annoying attack that just wrecks you unless you get inside one of these bubbles in time, but the attack comes out so fast that you barely have enough time to react and you end up eating shit anyways. You can't, you can't do that. You can't attack first and then give shields later. What, what kind of common courtesy is this? Other than that, a few good wind slaps to the face were all it took to beat the broccoli brawler. You know, I'm starting to think the reason why all these bosses aren't very much of a challenge is because Scaramouche is a ranged character, which allows him to consistently deal damage while staying at a safe distance out of harm's way. Nah, I'm just that good of a gamer. So, there you have it. All eight world bosses, one single character, and more sweet madams that I can count. And now that it's all done, I can finally... Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Whew, looks like you finally made it to the end of the video. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. This was, without a doubt, the most time-consuming and labour-intensive video I've ever produced, but it was also a lot of fun to do. This was just me dipping my toes into the, you know, gaming content creation sphere, and I really enjoyed doing it. In the future, I'm definitely planning to do more, you know, Genshin or maybe Honkai Star Rail themed videos, because I, I really want that to be my, my main point starting from now. But uh, yeah, so if you like that sort of stuff, yeah, go ahead and press the subscribe button. I hate doing that because, you know, the algorithm and everything, but you know, just you know, feel free to uh, leave a like, comment, all that. I know I left out one boss from the video, so it's technically not a complete run, but it literally came out just as I wrapped up recording and I just couldn't be asked to put him in just to record everything and animate everything. So mm, maybe I'll do it in the future in like a follow-up video. That being said, I am going to take a bit of a break from Genshin, uh, not just because I've been just grinding this game for this video, but uh, Genshin's pretty dead right now, to be honest. So I will be focusing more on uh, Honkai Star Rail. Maybe my next video will be something Honkai Star Rail themed. So look forward to that. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So uh, thank you again for watching and uh, see you next time. Screw you though.